And we'll see if the Giants can keep that going next Sunday as they travel to London to take on the Rams, a game that you can see at 9 a.m. on CBS2. Let's now turn our attention to baseball, and for that, we bring in the three-time All-Star 1995 American League MVP, the hit dog, Mo Vaughn, joins us. Mo, good to have you in studio, man. Good. Thanks for having me. Uh, always a pleasure to have you in here and, and talk a little bit about what you're doing right now. I mean, since your career has been completed, you've become like a, a real estate mogul, an entrepreneur. Now you've got this, this new clothing line that you want to show everybody. Well, it's uh, MVP Collections. Um, I started the line because I was the customer. Um, we're all e-com right now. It's been about nine weeks. Uh, but I just wanted to give, you know, the big, you know, 2X, 3X, 4X, 5X uh, guy an opportunity to have some style and flair and flash and look look good and have, you know, create a lifestyle look sure. um, where he could be professional and be cool and, and, uh, and, and, and do some nightlife at the same time. So that's how it, how it all came about. We started on e-com. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing for us is that we got to listen, you know, to our customers. So we have different platforms of social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook that we're using to find out where we need to hit, hit, hit our customer right, 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 right where <laughs> right. it happens. And that's what we're trying to do. Right. And I, I just became your sixth follower. You just started your, your Twitter account just yesterday, as a matter of fact. It's Mo Vaughn underscore 42 on Twitter. I'm, I'm, right now, I'm, there are six followers. Well, let's see how many more followers we can get for you by tomorrow I, morning. I'd appreciate it. I really okay. would appreciate it. All right. Very good. Uh, but the thing is this. You wear so many different hats. Did you ever think when you were a ball player that you would also be a model? No, listen, Dude. and I don't want to be the <laughs> model that I am right now. Or do you not put that you're a model uh, on your resume? I do not put the model status down. Okay. I think this is just, you know, preliminary. But whatever helps, you know, listen, I'm, you know, being important, uh, being in this brand, being the face of the brand, being, you know, I got a great partner. She, you know, she, she and I work well together. Um, but being involved in, 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 in getting involved in this process 100, you know, 100 percent is how this whole thing is going to work. So if I got to be the model, um, <laughs> you say it so reluctantly, it. everybody would like to jump. At Listen, the you know, to we know the model sizes. I'm not it. But it's, it's, <laughs> if it works, it works. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit of baseball real quick. Okay. Four teams left. Obviously, the Cubs, the Dodgers, uh, the Indians and the Blue Jays, your trucking company. Among many hats you wear, you're also a trucking company owner. Your trucking company is connected to the Cleveland Indians. So is it, is it safe to say you're going to be rooting for the Indians, even though they beat the Red Sox? It is. You know, um, I live there. My family's there. Um, I'm pulling for them. I think they're, uh, you know, they look like the Cavs. You know, they're, you know, up two games now. Right. Um, I think Terry from Francona is, is, is just key to pushing the right buttons. So now, you know, they got an opportunity. So they got to come back. Somebody's got to be, you know, Toronto's got to beat them four straight, four out of six, which will be tough. So let's hope that they can, can get to the next round. Well, you're feeling pretty good about it this time. Here's the thing. The Indians kind of fall into this category with the Chicago Cubs. Uh, casual fans love to root for the underdogs. They obviously rooted for the Boston Red Sox before they won the World Series in 2004 as well. Now the Indians and the Cubs are kind of like uh, the fan favorites, if you will. Does a team, does a franchise in a way lose a little bit of their mystique if the lovable losers are now the World Series champions? No, because I think you got to think about the fan bases. You think about the Red Sox fan base, you think about the, the Indians fan base, you think about the Cubs fan, those, those, those fan bases need it. They want it, you know. Well, Cleveland just had a nice celebration. I know, but they need it in baseball. Oh, so they, need another they, need, one. They, need, they need it in baseball, they need it in baseball. But you know, they come out and support their teams. They're a small market Cleveland, you know what I mean? So, so, so they need it. And I think, you know, just like with the Red Sox, they won that first one and you start, you know, figuring out how to do it, maybe you can win a couple more. Uh, baseball's kind of changed in the 13 years since you've left. One of the things that's really changed is how teams are addressing left-handed hitters. The defensive shifts has re have really improved in the past couple of years. Now, your numbers against lefties were always good. There were actual times when your numbers against lefties were better than they were against righties. What, do you, all, what do you attribute that to? Well, I think, you, I think the key to being a successful left-handed hitter and being in the key part of the lineup is you got to hit lefties because you're going to come up in key situations all the time that you got to be successful. Um, I think for me, I used to get comfortable because I used to face Randy Johnson. Um, I don't really know how well I did off him or didn't. But I think just standing in there, you know, made me, made me have confidence in other things. But uh, it's a mindset. You know, it was taught to me by, by a hitting coach uh, about being left-handed hitter. Um, I had great teachers, you know, with Mattingly and Brett, you know, those guys, you know, talked to me when I was a young guy. Uh, but it's, it's, it's important, you know, they got to be able to stand in there 
and, and, and drive the ball and, and, and drive and runs in that situation, definitely. Let's talk a little bit about Terry Collins because he came to New York with a little bit of a reputation. He was your skipper when you were with the Anaheim Angels. His reputation was not good. However, in his time here with the Mets, we have seen a clubhouse that is unified, if you will. Have we misunderstood Terry Collins this entire time? But what do you, what's your take on Terry? I think, listen, I was misunderstood as a player. I was misunderstood in Boston. I'm sure he was misunderstood too. Terry Clowns is a good guy. Um, he always has been. Um, and I think, you know, he's showing it now. You know, he's showing, you know, he, sometimes it takes, you know, people, and this, this is just for me alone, it takes people to, to, to mature and you, and, and you figure things out. And maybe you gotta go through the process one or two times to figure it out. But listen, you know, they got no better leader um, over there in, in, in the Mets clubhouse than him. He's, he's taking them to the playoffs, he's taking them to the World Series. He's, he's right there, so I, I think he's doing a great job. Sports rarely interacts with politics, but this year it seems like politics is taking the forefront in this. Um, just recently, Republican nominee Donald Trump tried to minimize some of his comments by saying that it was locker room talk. In your experience, is that kind of talk something that you would hear in a clubhouse? Well, listen, the locker room is definitely not PG. It will probably rated R, no doubt about it. But to his tone, Definitely not. Listen, everybody gets in their clicks and says different things. But I think, you know, especially in, in you know, when I was coming up, we had women that were reporters. So mm -hmm. it was really, you had to be respectful. But to think that, you know, this is like we were shouting across the rock, you know, locker room, you know, obscenities or things about women, that's not how it went at all. That wasn't a reality in any clubhouse that you've ever been that's in. Not, that's not, that's not how, I, how it goes. Listen, everybody has their days. And I said, you know, you might get in small pockets. People might be talking trash. Everybody talks trash. But, you know, the, you know, the rhetoric of, of just this is how what people do in the locker room is completely false. Well, thanks for your honesty and thanks for showing us what, what life is like in your world right now. His new clothing line is for big and tall. It is called MVP Collections. MVP. Oh, Vaughn, thanks for coming in. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.